Uh, good afternoon. I'm just going to do a small, tiny little introduction to this session um, because I can. Uh, <laughs> years ago, in 2020, we were here. Was it 2020? 2019? Whenever we were here. Uh, where are you? Vancouver, yeah. I actually I left Vancouver, went to Seattle, and didn't realize I met myself and Mark were in a bar. Oh, that's a surprise. I know. We were in a bar. Mark said to me, What do you think of this COVID thing? I said, Don't worry, two weeks it's gone. <laughs> I land the next day in Seattle and I'm flying back to Dublin and I walk into this huge airport and it's empty. Then I get onto an A330 and there's about 20 people on the plane. I said, Oh. Yeah. I don't worry about it. <laughs> so right back in Dublin, we were locked down for two and a half years. So it's been wonderful to be back, seeing people. We had the privilege of this last year at ESS. If you were there, thank you. If you weren't, we'll say nothing. <laughs> anyway, so we started this project called Go Baby Go. So Go Baby Go, as you all know, is small little cars that are adapted for um, children to give them the first sense of real power mobility and mobility. Um, how do we turn on this audio? Press the so one of the great things about COVID was there were no cars on the road. So <laughs> you couldn't have done this the year beforehand. So this child was able to use, this was actually sent to us on the probably the first month of COVID by a parent to say, look, COVID has its pluses. Uh -huh. So this was the plus. So as you can see, the, the electronics um, are built into the steering wheel and there's a seat with supports on it. And it's a great system and it really does teach people about mobility and you know orientation and space, et cetera. However, it also had its limitations because how long are you gonna get out of this? You know, and these kids grow as quick. It's just like, you know, you get your first, you have, if, if you have children, you get your first child, you buy, you buy them uh, the best of clothes and you realize, why don't I spend all that money? They grow out of them. So then comes this. So I'm not going to say much more. All I'm going to say is this has been one of the most successful projects that we've started in our clinic. And I think it will lead to bigger things. And hopefully the people in the room um, can collaborate into the future, but as you can see, it's it's multinational. He's not Irish. He's working in Ireland. He's Canadian, <laughs> American, and um, American. So it's not Argentina. <laughs> oh well. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> bon dia. <laughs> so, uh, but the difference is, uh, well, yeah, I made a mistake. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm taking after your president. Uh, <laughs> I gotta go. And go to bed. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Sam. Thank you so much, Simon. I appreciate the warm welcome and especially appreciate the audience. Um, we started as a pre-con and the pre-con oh, and the pre-conference was canceled. And so we uh, oh technology, gotta love it. Scott, this is an antique computer. I know. So this is the title of our presentation. It started as pre-con. We were supposed to do a four-hour pre-con. It was canceled uh, shortly before we were supposed to do it. So we took four hours worth of content and reduced it into one hour. It was a tough job to do it. But um, So the other people that are here today, and I'll introduce myself as Teresa Plummer. I work, teach as a professor in the School of Occupational Therapy at Belmont University in Nashville, and I'll have them introduce themselves. And Nicole and Shanad will also introduce themselves. So disclosure, that was a disclosure started out as four hours, ended up with one hour. Other disclosure is uh, no disclosures from anybody except Scott and myself. My disclosure is I am an independent researcher with Permaville. I do not work for Permaville. I've only done some studies to help them with their FDA work. So I want to disclose that, that um, that is my position. So these are the objectives we're going to cover today. Uh, we, we, we won't go through them initially, but we will talk about them um, as we get to them. So this whole project started with Heather Feldner, myself, and Allison Hendry. So when the Explorer Mini was introduced in 2020, it was a great device, and we all looked around and said, this is a great device. Now what? 
How do we how do we teach infants and young children how to use power mobility device devices? And so we sought the opinion of 40 or so international experts in the field of pediatric positioning. We read 178 articles, probably more than that. And we created a reference guide of a guideline to use pediatric, a guideline for teaching infants and children pediatric mobility. So it's a guideline. It's not a guide. It is not, you must do it this way and you must do it this way. We took evidence from lots of different professions, including um, PT, OT, developmental psychology, optometry, and created a guide for how to do, um, how to teach using the proper ter terminology. Um, the other unique thing about this is we involved a, a speech language pathologist and a team of SLPs to help us with what language do we use to teach children? Because especially if we're talking about six month old or one year old child, a nonverbal child, how do we capture um, good information from them, but at the same time teach them how to use this device without using adult language. And so there's a, um, a special section on here about that. We'll hear from the um, speech therapist um, from CRC and how they're using the device as part of speech language pathology interventions. So I, I list this here just to let you know that there are also guides you can get if you want to take a quick shot at this, or you can go to the Permaville website. There is a the full guide, which is 170 pages or so. There is a family guide, which is a, re, a condensed version of it. There is a um, clinical guide. So if somebody's just using it in the clinic and they don't want to read all the research associated with it. And I have a student now who's going to be working on a playbook of how to create play activities for children with this, using this mobility device. Is this mine or yours? Oh, it's yours. Okay. So we know that... <laughs> We know that mobility is related to development and all things are related to development. So one of the issues with um, not introducing power mobility to a later stage is movement is in, intrinsically linked to development. So if we miss movement, we miss a lot of other developmental milestones. And so if a child doesn't have self-initiated mobility at a very, very young age, I would say six months based on theoretical foundations, but if they don't have access to self-initiated mobility at a super young age, they're going to miss developmental milestones. And so um, that is one really key feature of this and key feature of the guideline is it talks about developmental milestones. And we'll talk about the outcome measure we used for that. So again, when we, our full presentation linked each of the developmental milestones um, to some intervention strategies. So maybe next year, maybe Ireland, we'll talk about that. Um, so one of the things the guideline does point out, and I think it's important to consider, is there are no, no, no prerequisites for using power mobility, none. It's not vision, it's not object permanence. In fact, children learn development by the use of mobility. So for instance, an infant is born, if you were at my session this morning, an infant is born with palmar grasp, right? So if that palmar grasp is used to touch a joystick and move a joystick, they have just learned how to do it. They didn't have to have cause and effect. They didn't have to have object permanence. It's the device that's the intervention, not a bunch of skills you have outside of the device that then you generalize. And so I want to um, mention that, but there are some things that are just emerging at that time that are important to think about, but again, they're not prerequisites. And that would be um, trunk control. So if you think about trunk controls, um, proximal stability, head control, proximal stability, eye movement, proximal stability. So those skills, if a child has the ability to sit upright, head control is gonna occur. Eye movement is gonna occur. Vision is gonna develop. So those things are developing and emerging skills associated with it as is upper extremity weight bearing. So the tray, the, and we're not selling the Explorer Mini, please don't hear that. This is the device we use, that's all we use. And so I wouldn't wanna generalize this to other things. And so I'm just gonna also make that clear. Um, so anyway, and so children with developmental disabilities um, are typically our, our um, population we deal with. So one of the things about children with developmental disabilities is most children, mm, no, all, children born premature have visual deficits, all, because the vision, visual structures are developed in the third trimester of birth. So if they're born premature, they're gonna have visual deficits, which is why they're gonna have difficulty using power mobility devices, unless 
we um, supplement and unless, unless we involve vision as part of the mobility experience, the, the child is not going to be successful. So there's a real emphasis on that. Um, children, another thing about premature children, children at six, oftentimes children born premature have monocular gaze, not binocular. So they don't develop good visual fixation, which is binocular vision looking at one thing. Rather, they lie supine, their head gets flattened, and they have plagiocephaly, which makes one eye more dominant than the other. And so they become monocular. So their visual skills while moving in a power mobility device are going to be compromised. And so there are things to do about that. Um, yeah, and so essentially that's what I want to say. You need to have some stability before you have mobility. So st trunk stability, the, uh, the way the Explorer Mini is designed is it allows for upper extremity weight bearing, 15 degrees of um, hip abduction and weight bearing through the lower extremities, a wide base of support. And all that sensory input means they'll have motor output. So proprioceptive input leads to motor output. In other words, must joint co-contraction to provide them with stability. Scott, you are on. Am I? Oh, brilliant. <laughs> Thank you very much for that. Um, okay, so I had the lovely task of bringing the guideline together uh, and exploring ways of making it into a functioning clinic. Now, uh, Simon mentioned we already had the Go Baby Go clinic going, so we had a template to work off of, uh, but we wanted to take that step further and um, and lower the lower the age of the uh, the clients that we were seeing. So between the ages of one and three, I'll get to our referral criteria in a minute, but the most important part was the, the teamwork collaboration. Uh, we, it was the first time that I had a speech therapist working in a seating and kind of a mobility project. And I have to say, I learned so much. Um, and I'd like to introduce you to Nicole, who can't be here today, but she's here in spirit and in video. Uh, <laughs> and my colleague, uh, Sinead. Now, um, what was it? Uh, yeah, the, the Irish names, you're gonna run across a couple Irish names here and they're spelled funny, but yeah, but I'll, I'll pronounce it for you. <laughs> so initially um, we, we started out with the idea of a multi, like we, we run on kind of multidisciplinary uh, framework. Um, but our, our, our vision was to have an interdisciplinary, we're able to cross pollinate our, our uh, profession and I can learn about speech therapy and they can learn about uh, OT and PT. Uh, and, um, and also we have access to psychologists and uh, other health professionals that we were hoping to loop into the, uh, into the program. But what became apparent was that the, the uh, transdisciplinary model that we had envisioned wasn't really practical for uh, the real world application for fundings and such. So like if speech therapists were applying for a mobility product, it, it, it might not, uh, it might not uh, float in, in our system. Uh, so we moved more towards uh, an interdisciplinary model. And with that, I will introduce uh, Nicole and Sinead. Oh, do we have volume? Oh, how do you do that? Thank you. So we're going to make magic happen here. It's right in the middle. I think she, Nicole would find it quite funny that uh, she's, oh, there we go. <laughs> that she's having a problem being heard. <laughs> language during the initial assessment to kind of give us an idea of what kind of advice okay. to provide to parents this and how to tailor, you know, the verbal and auditory that? cues. No. Okay, right. So it's, it's supposed to be another thing, but it's not. Okay, give it, give it another try there. Oh, there. Um, and just in terms of kind of the speech and language protocol that we have even an HDMI cable. So, you know, we decided that I mean, you're plugged in, you have it. Language skills for use with the Explorer Mini. Um, you know, obviously, it's helpful to know and understand a child's receptive and expressive oh, language so to tailor the uh, intervention. Yeah, I mean, you're, but you're, it's not you're plugged in. <laughs> so, really, just for ourselves, that if we kind of felt that the child wasn't understanding keywords, that we needed. All right. Well, this is where the, uh, the transdisciplinary model comes into play. <laughs> so, let's pretend that I'm a speech therapist. 
effective language um, learning English assessment to kind of give that? us an idea. Of I'll just I'll, 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 I'll put it as on the link there. Okay. So I'm not a speech therapist, but if I were a speech therapist, I would say that there, there isn't a necessary prerequisite for, uh, for going into this. The, the, uh, the concept of, uh, let, me, let, me get, let me tackle just a little, just the front. Um, <laughs> so Nicole, Nicole, um, Nicole taught me about uh, how language is heard from, uh, from the perspective of a child and that a, a child with a disability doesn't get the same kind of uh, conversations. They don't get the same kind of nonverbal communication and they don't get the same type of social interaction that you would get um, from an able-bodied child that's uh, typically developing. Um, so what does that mean for, for a child uh, who with, a, uh, with a disability? It means that the words that they hear aren't going to be action words. They're not going to be come here, go there, get me this, get me that. Um, so the, the beautiful thing about what Nicole has to bring is that she, she brought uh, forward the concepts to the parents that they can change their language about how they, oh, <laughs> they, can change, they can change the language about how they, uh, how they interact with their child. And um, so with, with our project, um, she started out uh, with providing some uh, simple picture exchange systems uh, that, that are on offer. Uh, all of our children, although we, we, we do see them as a primary physical disability as our referral criteria, they often have an overlap into all other areas. So, um, so using uh, the picture exchange system and symbols was a, was a good starting point uh, for parents. Um, particularly if their uh, if their children aren't using any sort of communication at all. Um, so uh, we created a package uh, that went that had a specific speech therapy content to it. Um, now, often the children that we would see would already have a speech therapist in the community uh, that would uh, that would be feeding into the family, and we would link in with them to provide them uh, advice on uh, how to use the. Explore Mini as, as a way to augment the therapy that's already in place. Um, she provided, or, and the other thing that Nicole did was she came up with a, a series of inter, interaction uh, guidelines. Now, in, um, in, the, in, the, um, in, the, in uh, the Feldner Plummer uh, <laughs> Hendry guideline, uh, I, there's a, there's a uh, there's kind of a reflection of the uh, um, Hannon um, uh, speech therapy program. And Nicole uh, took that a little step further and then uh, put it into uh, sections that the, um, that the family can follow. Okay. Um, so, oh, oops, sorry. You know what? Do you know what the examples of the things that we're using? You'll see in a second. So I'm going to skip this slide. Okay, this is Jack, and uh, Jack came to us just before the European Seating Symposium last year in 2022. He was almost two at the time. Well, no, sorry, yeah, he was just under. I think he was a year, ten months in this. And um, uh, Jack is a boy with cerebral palsy. He lives. He's the first child uh, uh, from this family. Um, so. The parents are learning as much as uh, Jack is learning every day when they wake up to do their everyday things. Jack has therapy services in place. He's been seen from early intervention. He did. He he was premature, uh, but um, but in terms of overall development, he has delayed uh, not just physically but with communication. And so I have a little video of Jack here showing us what he can do. In the box, where's the box? Oh. Good boy. Yes. Good boy. Oh. 
Oi, again? Again. So uh, is, this, is this a game? Is this fun? Is it interactive? Does it look like a therapy, uh, a therapy table? <laughs> Or are you getting somebody to use uh, Did he get it? primarily the, the, the stronger side of his body, you know? Um, and that's, that's his play. If you look at his posture as well, you can see he's kind of dipping over to the side there, trying to help himself out there as best we can. Right, and he's, and he's, got, a, uh, he's got a personality try and he's showing his frustration on the point. Okay. But you don't know, Jack. <laughs> so uh, let's consider this for a moment. Uh, children receive information from their environment and they act on their environment in a way that generates new information to, per to be perceived. Children are meant to explore, they're wired to explore, and they're primed to explore, particularly at the ages between well, six months uh, to just past a year when all language, motor, uh, sensory, and uh, social comes into, into play together. But I'd also argue that it's also a time, for, particularly for new parents, to be exploring their roles as a new parent, parenting a child uh, uh, who's going through these changes. Um, and developmental abilities don't emerge de novo. Oh, wow but rather emerge from a rich history of exploration and daily interactions with their caregivers. So I attended the, uh, the cognitive conference, uh, the talk this morning too, and there was a, a real uh, uh, echo of the idea of repetition and that children by repeating things over and over again, they begin to take on uh, new skill sets and they, they learn better ways of doing things by refining the process. Um, and movement and exploration is, is part and parcel with a developing child. And they're primed. They are primed to be moving and exploring. Uh, but when, physical, when a physical um, uh, delay or uh, impairment or disability prevents them from doing that, it impacts all areas. So uh, two years, or not two years, sorry, 2022, last year uh, at ESS, this was our workshop. And we did have an Explorer Mini on hand, and this is Jack's first uh, experience with the Explorer Mini that we just gave it a go. So right away, you can hear uh, the conversation has already stopped. Let's go get it. <laughs> You'll notice his frustration here in just a minute. Yeah. Oh. I would say he was fussy, furiously fussy. He wants something. He's looking for his music. He loves music. And they move it further and further away from him. Oh, he's figuring it out. <laughs> it's push to go. But you're right, uh, the natural tendency is to rake in and to bring it into their personal space. I think that they catch on pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's Jack. You're getting to know him a little bit better. Um, okay. Um, and powered mobility is an intervention that gives children a means of self-initiated movement, and it allows independent exploration and negotiation of their environment. And uh, we, I'm going to get into the the guts of what our clinic looks like, all of the all of the um, the design of our clinic, um, and then. I'd like you to ask, uh, kind of consider that question as, as you go through some of the videos that we had. So our starting point uh, was uh, right after the ESS, we were, all, we were all super motivated after attending the um, Go Baby Go uh, workshop. Um, but then we 
we went to uh, Simon and we told him about our ideas about how we'd like to advance the clinic into into a way. The the Go Baby Code Carts are good to a point, but really kind of tapping into like a child who's developmentally primed to be moving, uh, but can't move was was our goal. Um, so we use the guideline to create a, a clinical model. Um, now we consider that the the person was at the the center of the model, but it, but that was family orientated, but child centered. Um, Again, as I mentioned, the child's developmentally primed uh, at the age uh, at the ages that we were we were dealing with, um, and we could take advantage of the neuroplasticity uh, and the developmental uh, push that they're they're getting from inside. Um, and that the the idea of our clinical model as well was that they get the repetition that we we were trying to provide for them so instead of uh, having like a clinic day once a week or twice a week or three times a week uh, we set it up in a way that they could take the equipment home with them so how do you go about sending equipment home <laughs> with a family um, and th and that's something that we did tackle uh, tackle well uh, but again, the idea was to uh, get them in a familiar environment with their family uh, where they can learn and explore together. The, the parents will learn what their child can do and the child can explore in a safe and familiar uh, environment. Um, and uh, there, I, had a, I had a lovely section on the, on the uh, CMOP here. Uh, being Canadian, I, I think it goes part and parcel. It's in my blood. Uh, but... Uh, uh, sure, you'll have to attend the um, you'll have to attend the uh, workshop next time if you want to get into a good chat with me about that. <laughs> <laughs> one. The four hour one. I want to talk for four hours on that though. Um, so we created a terms of reference as a starting point where we outlined our roles and responsibilities. Who does what? Who does where? What kind of what kind of mentality that we're thinking? Um, and then we outline the aims of the clinic uh, that are that are listed there. I think it's important to get a roadmap of where you're going instead of just going at it. Um, it's nice to have kind of a common direction and a goal uh, in mind that uh, you're hoping to influence uh, the development of a child within their own, within their own environment. Um, we, we sought to uh, promote the introduction of early uh, power mobility as a therapeutic mo modality. And we also sought ways of how are we going to integrate this into the community? Uh, so Ireland has a socialized medicine and it's, a, it's, a, it's quite different from what you, what you, uh, how you practice in, in the States where you have to go through insurance companies and you have to do applications and you have to prove that you're getting value for money and such. Not that they don't do that there, but it's a little bit different. Um, so with that in mind, uh, we sought to collect data and, and measure the value of what we were doing in terms of impact uh, on, on the, uh, the children uh, that we had in our service. Okay, so our referral criteria were uh, toddlers between the age of one, and actually we lowered that age to uh, two and a half, and I'll explain that in a second, um, with a primary physical disability. And, uh, not that we couldn't accept children with other disabilities, but the mandate of our facility is that we have we service uh, client population with primary disability, uh, physical disability. Um, under 14 kilos, because the the in the FDA uh, gu uh, guidance for the uh, Explorer Mini, it's under 16 kilos. Does anybody know how many pounds that is? 35. 35 pounds? 36 pounds? Okay, good. And 39 is all right, very good. So it's it's one meter in in metric system, um, but we went to uh, 95 centimeters. And why did we do that? And the reason is because we want to stay under well underneath the, the the bar so that we have at least some time to explore. So over over a six month period, which is the the time that we're loaning our equipment to the to our clients, um, we would hope that they would probably stay underneath 16 kilos and, and, and then one meter tall. Okay, and the resources that we applied for were two clinicians, uh, clinic space, and six, excuse me, six Explorer minis. And 
Um, we purchased those privately. Uh, we didn't get any funding from for mobile, and we only really we only used the guidance that was provided mm -hmm. in the uh, in the published uh, manual. Now, uh, this is where <laughs> this is where again uh, this is where I, this is the area that I like is coming up with ways as to how things fit together, and um, rather than just having uh, having equipment that's given out. I, I saw this as like kind of like a loan library, uh, but that had a, a processing in place so that, you know, if I if I give uh, you, Ricardo, if I give you something uh, and you take it home, it comes back and I have, I know exactly what I'm going to do with it as soon as I get it back. Uh, so we have a system of cleaning it, of storing it, uh, or recycling it again. Um, we, if we have to assess the, the patient uh, and the family, uh, in the, uh, I'll get to that in a sec. Um, but we have a pathways in place. We had to develop loan forms uh, that went around uh, competencies of uh, not just using the equipment, but also setting the home up for safety. And uh, safety was a very uh, big component of of our clinic design. And, and I'll get to some of the some of the details of that in a minute. Um, and you can see, oh yeah, I won't get into the new we won't have time for that. Um, so safety was at the core of this. Uh, the last thing that we want is anybody to suffer a serious injury. And um, so we, OTs and PTs uh, sat down and we came up with uh, guidelines as to how a parent should set up their home to be safe uh, for uh, a child that comes home uh, with a new mobility product. Now, for families like Jack, uh, they don't know, they, they weren't prepared for having a child that was previously immobile and now suddenly can move. Um, and it, it's not a gradual process, it's an immediate process within weeks rather than a gradual period of over months. So what happened was um, they had to, we, we assess uh, the parents to see we're watching them in the clinic setting in our first appointment. We're seeing how attentive they are. Do they respond to their child? Do they, are they watching them? Basically, how good of a supervisor are the parents? Um, and then we do a survey of their home to see, is their home set up appropriately? What are the dangers in the home? Do they have stairs? Do they not have stairs? Do they have rugs? Do they have things? Do they have a dog? Do they have glass doors? Do they use baby gates? So like we, we, we evaluate the home uh, set up to make sure that it's not uh, a too cluttered, too busy, and that the, room, the child has uh, room to explore, uh, but also that the, the parent is attentive enough to, uh, to bail their child out of, of a problem uh, should they get into one. Um, and the structure that we have, we have monthly clinics. Um, we have a first initial assessment that I kind of just described with you, and at that, um, and at that uh, assessment, if we think, think that they would, would be moving forward, we would uh, use this uh, credit evaluation uh, that I'll describe in a minute. Um, and on the, if on the initial assessment, we think that they're appropriate, then we give them information to get their home set up and prepare them for, um, to prepare them for having their home child ready when when they bring the equipment home in one month so we check in with them we uh on the second visit and if they feel that their home is ready to ready to go then that's when the equipment loan begins <clears throat> is that all you considered did you put that in there <laughs> corn oh gee look at that corn sitter Okay, <laughs> you got me. <laughs> um, so as part of the, uh, we also came up with the, the loan, you got me. <laughs> as, as part of the, uh, the loan, uh, we go through, uh, we have a loan form process uh, that has the, uh, again, the, uh, the, the, green, the loan agreement. Now, the loan agreement is a very important document. It's a legal document. And I'd say in the States, you could be quite sued if you did not get it, <laughs> get some kind of agreement on the loan. Um, but that's just because of the culture that's here. Um, in Ireland, it's not as, uh, not that it's not as important, but it's not as, you you know, the, the threat of being sued isn't over every single action that you do. <laughs> <laughs> um, um, but 
but we do put weight in the, into the document. And we think that the document is very important that there's an understanding that goes around the equipment, that it's over a six month loan period, that they can contact us at any time. We expect that they keep a journal, whether it's video, written, recorded, any, any which way that they can, and they feed back to us on a weekly basis. Um, we go through how to use the chair, how to adjust it, how to lift it up and down, how to, how to lift up the pommel, how to move down the table tray. Uh, we teach them about uh, laundering the, the backrest, if it needs to be laundered or if it fits. Um, so we have like we have a line of communication open as well so that if they run into any problems at all that they can contact us. Oh, how to turn it on and off as well. That, that's a good one. Um, <laughs> uh, and then we have a three month loan follow up. So at that point for, for our pilot clinic, we readministered the, oh, I'm like going quick, okay. Um, <laughs> we re-administer the, the credit and then and it's at that point we established goals with the COPM because I think I think you need to kind of feel it out a little bit first before you establish goals and um, uh, initially I don't think parents know what to what to expect or how to establish a goal so um, so if you wait a little bit longer uh, and give them a little bit of time to feel it out I think you can get more meaningful goals and hopefully you'll see that in the next section. And the reason we chose the CREDI, which stands for Caregiver oh, yes, Reported yes. Early Developmental Inventory, is a hundred questionnaire, hundred item questionnaire from uh, is created in Harvard. It's available in forty eight languages, and it goes through developmental sequences. It doesn't talk about skills; it talks about developmental achievements. And so that was the outcome criteria we decided would yep. be a, a good fit for this population. And it's available if you just look up credit, you'll get all, it's free, you get all the information you need about it. And I, we feel like, and we have demonstrated its effectiveness in measuring um, outcomes related to yep. child development. Okay. And that's just an example of some of the, uh, some of the questions that are asked on the credit. Um, so our case studies, we have four. There's Jack, Saban, uh, Eva, and Bridget. This is Kaya. This is her first. Uh, this is her first visit. So I'm going through the loan process there. She obviously not responsive to what we what we do do. Um, so you'd be responsible to return uh, the explore mini uh, by the agreed return date. Well, if you have any problems, and then there's a phone number there. I mean, to reach us. Okay. You've already set up your home. Yeah. It, it'd be the sickness. You know, know. Yeah, it would be the issues with the palace. You can put things on top of it. You can uh, you can have a little, you, you can be a bit creative about how to make this interesting for time uh, within a reasonable distance, but a reasonable speed. Uh, things are not, you know, it has a nice uh, contrast to it. So, right now, nothing will turn on. So, just the, the full boom here. It fall off it can go up quite fast. Uh, it's, it's robust in terms of its build. So it, it you can use it in standing as well uh, as part of a, the physios on our team, uh, like the standing option. You'll notice in all the pictures um, Scott is using or whoever's working with the child is using information that you would find in the guideline that um, has been suggested in uh, supportive literature on how best to teach children at a very young age how to use a device. You can see the father's using a bit of hand over hand there. He's a very attentive parent as well. He attended both of the appointments and he's a stay at home dad. We were just offering up a different presentation to the joystick. She didn't like it. Every <laughs> day. <laughs> but it's not unusual for them not to know what to do at the beginning. Again, this is where the exploration comes into play and being somewhere familiar. Now, this is Suban. This is his first appointment. He now he cried the whole time. And if you went to all of his, uh, if you went to all of his appointments for the previous, whenever he's come to our visit, he's cried the whole time. 
Um, so we loaned them this uh, for the first month. Um, and this is at this is at home. And at home, he plays, he interacts with his environment, with his with his sisters. He plays hide and seek, and he's the seeker. He goes out and he finds them. And then when it's her turn, his turn to hide, he puts a blanket over his head. <laughs> so he, the amazing thing here is you see like before he was velcroed to his mom and now like he actually rolled into clinic reaching that is the toy the play friendly environment yeah. and no directions given he has spina bifida but he does have a language delay and he's socially uh, behind Uh, he used his mother as a mobility device beforehand. Uh, he would point his mom as to where to go and what to do. Um, but here we've been able to enable him. You know, he wants to. He wants to build Bob the builder. And then he goes over and he gets it. He, he went everywhere. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Not a single tear until. <laughs> Get your tissues out for this one. It was uh, one of the one of the rare days it doesn't rain in Ireland, so we, we took advantage of it. And he's choosing who, where he goes, who he comes to. He's always keep an eye on mom, but um, you can see he's really mastered from not wanting to even touch the joystick. He's he's flying around. I right, go on, put it in. <laughs> so this is Eva, and um, she's uh, at this time. She's Where are you going? push, push. <laughs> she has arthrogryposis, and she has a couple uh, syndromic Here, underlays. Push, Eva. Oh, yep. she's wearing a patch yep. on one watch, eye at watch. the moment. Watch, <laughs> watch. Are you watching? Watch, push, push. Push, pull, push. So you can hear the language has changed. Surprise, but look at it. Go again, Aves. Oh. <laughs> Oopsie. Nice. Push. Go again. All of the statements underneath are part of the parent journal that they send in each week. Oh, you Good job, yourself. You That's your girl. Oh, you're turning. You're turning it. Oh, oh girl. girl. She's a couple months you, premature right? as well. So we've got her actual age instead of like her adjusted age. So. And Good girl. her patch is off her eye. Yeah. And her first word was car. Are you going to the kitchen? Sweet. <laughs> nice. You can see the bad. hand skills going oh, on. Fresh. And this is at the review appointment. So we we're having so much fun with Suvan that our, his appointment ran into hers. So instead of uh, isolating him, we had them all together. And even though Suvan's only a little bit older than he is, you can see they're very different, their personalities and at their play level. There's, she's kind of playing on her own and staying near mom. Suvan's just... Uh, <laughs> One thing that I really like about this particular joystick is it's the shape of the baby's hand during this age. It's by the manual. It can be used unilaterally or bilaterally. And it's perfect distance for where their eyes can see and visually fixate at the same. Also, you might notice the saddle seat also keeps the hips at 15 degrees of abduction and allows for weight bearing through the feet. Oh. No direction given here, right, Scott? Yeah, no, to go this, play with each none other. of this is staged. We did not direct them, and there was no, there's no screenplay prior to this. They're not, they're, they're just playing. <laughs> and one thing I liked about the group is that they were actually watching each other. 
and I think that's an, uh, uh, an ideal time for learning. You notice the change in her head control just after one month. Yeah. Um, she's really, she's really getting, um, <laughs> there's a direct correlation between banging on the joist, uh, banging on the lap tray and vocalization. Um, do we have time for this? We're at 46 minutes. Uh, I could pop. Maybe just go to the last one. Yeah. Okay. Sorry. Sorry. Come to our workshop next time, please. <laughs> <laughs> At least sign up for it. <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Um, okay. So our credit three month retest. So it's a short duration. It's a short period of time, and the um, the credit did capture change. Is it significant? It's not significant change, but it was uh, an improvement in all areas. So. Um, there's a cognitive language. Yeah. It's, 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 yes, we, yeah, we, I'm sorry, we don't have time to go over all the details of it. We, yeah. I would invite you to look it up and, um, find a little bit more information about it. It would take us too much time for, to explain, but it is valid and reliable. It's available in many languages and it was developed out of Harvard. Yeah. No, that's true because we had a small N and we didn't want to take um, a lot of time talking yeah. about that. We wanted to take time showing you the changes, but yes, um, there are significant changes. And if, if this were meant to be a research project, we certainly would have done that. Yeah, it's a, a clinic, it's a pilot clinic. Um, but that being said, uh, and it was a short time with a, a small number, so it wouldn't have much power. But what it did show is that there was a, oops, a change in each one, in each area of cognitive uh, language, motor, uh, social, emotional, and then an overall change. Um, for, and this is, this is for all of the children on the, uh, on the uh, clustered bar, okay? And the other ones are individual changes over there. 